Let's consider the problem 698A, vacations. This is a dynamic programming problem. The problem statement is as follows. You have n days, n is up to 100. Each day you have three options to pick from. You can pick contest, gym, or rest. However, there are restrictions on what you can pick. Each day, the restrictions are represented by a number from 0 to 3. Rest you can pick on, every, on any day. If the number is 0, then you have no options available, other than of course to rest. This means that you cannot pick contest in gym, and you must pick rest. If the number is 1, you can pick contest, or you of course rest. If the number is 2, you can pick gym, or of course rest. And if the number is 3, you can pick contest, gym, or rest. Further restrictions are you cannot choose contest on two consecutive days, and you cannot choose gym on two consecutive days. Now, given all these restrictions, your goal is to find the minimum number of days that have to be rest. Let's look at the sample input. In the sample input, n, which is the number of days, is 4. a, which is the array of, what, of the restrictions from each day, is 1, 3, 2, and 0. Of course, we can rest on every day. But what this means is that on day one, we also have the option of contest. On day two, we have the additional options of contest and gym. On day three, we have the additional option of gym. And on day four, we have no additional option. Of course, this means that on day four, we must choose rest. The answer is two, because two days have to be rest. Here, we would simply output the number two. One way to do this is if we choose contest on the first day, rest on the second, gym on the third, and rest on the fourth. Another way is if we choose contest on the first, gym on the second, rest on the third, and rest on the fourth. There are no other ways to, to, to get two as the answer. And all other ways will get a bigger number than two. Let's first consider the brute force solution. The brute force solution is as follows. Each day we have three options, rest, contest, or gym. We will try each option for every day. So each day there are three options, so there are a total of three to the power of n ways to try every single option. Once we have an option, we will loop through all the days and see if the constraints are met. And from all of these, we will take the minimum number, the one which has the minimum number of days or rest. The runtime is O of n times 3 to the n, because there are 3 to the n ways, and n because we have to loop through the days to see if the constraints are met at the end. This is approximately 5 times 10 to the power of 49, which is way bigger than 10 to the power of 9. The solution is too slow and will not work. This is why we need dynamic programming. We have to first define our dynamic programming state. Since each day we can choose rest, contest, or gym, we will have three different states. DP day zero is the minimum days rested up to the current day if we choose rest on the current day. This basically means that we're resting on the current day. And DP day one is the same as DP day zero, but we're doing a contest on the current day. DP day two is again the same, except for we're doing gym on the current day. We will start by initializing it which means we will declare dp of 103 because n is up to 100, and 3 because the states are 0, 1, and 2 from here. Let's first consider day 0, because day 0 we, we have to do to initialize the dp array. We can always just choose rest on day 0, just like we can choose rest on any day. So dp 0, 0 is 1, because going back to the dp state, it's the minimum days rested up to the current day. The minimum days rested if you choose rest on day zero is one. If we choose a contest, if we can choose a contest on day zero, because we cannot always choose a contest, then dp zero one equals zero, because we have rested no days. If we can choose gym, gym then dp zero two equals zero, because again, we, only one day has passed and we have rested zero days. And of course, I'm calling this day zero because we're using zero-based indexing. Now let's consider any future day. We can first, we can choose to rest. And now we can always choose to rest. If we rest, then the previous day could have been rest, gym, or contest. 
dpi0, which is the dp state that if we rest on the current day, equals 1 plus the min of dpi minus 1, 0, if we rest on the previous day, dpi minus 1, 1, if we did a contest on the previous day, or dpi minus 1, 2, if we went to the gym on the previous day. We add 1 because we're resting on the current today, so the number of days rested goes up by 1. We take the min of the rest, gym, or contest from the previous day because we're trying to minimize the number of days that we need to rest. The next option is to do a contest. We can only do a contest if a of i equals 1 or a of i equals 3. If we're doing a contest, then the previous day we could have rested or gone to the gym. Because of that, dpi1, if we're doing a contest on the previous day, equals min of dpi minus 1, 0 if we rested on the previous day, or dpi minus 1, 2 if we went to the gym on the previous day. We don't add 1 because we're not resting on the current day, so the number of days rested does not increase from the number of days rested on the previous day. The last option is going to the gym. Going to the gym is pretty similar to doing a contest. We can only go to a gym if a of i equals 2 or a of i equals 3. If we go to a gym, the previous day we could have rested or done a contest. Because of that, dpi2, dp state of doing a, going to the gym on the current day, equals min of dpi minus 1, 0 if we rested on the previous day, and dpi minus 1, 1 if we did a contest on the previous day. The reason we don't put dpi minus 1, 2 is because if we went to the gym on the previous day, we cannot go to the gym today. We cannot go to the gym on two consecutive days. Let's consider the answer to the problem. Now let's just remember, recall that we're outputting the minimum number of days that have to be rest. The last day can be a rest, contest, or gym. And the answer is the minimum number of days that have to be rest, knowing that the last day can be rest, contest, or gym. That is the minimum of dpn minus 1, 0 if the last day is rest, dpn minus 1, 1 if the last day is a contest, and dpn minus 1, 2 if the last day you're going to the gym. We're using n minus 1 instead of dpn 0, dpn 1, dpn 2, simply because we're using zero-based indexing. If you decide to code this using one-based indexing, then you'll use n instead of n minus 1. Let's look at how the dp array will work. This is our dp array. This is our day. And this is the 0, 1, 2. And this is, we're using the sample input. Originally, we set our whole dp array to infinity because we're trying to find the minimum number for our answer. And so if we set the dp array originally to 0, like it will default to in C++, then it'll just print the answer out as 0 because that's smaller than the actual answer. If we set the array to infinity, then when it takes the minimum, it'll take the number that's not infinity. A practical way to do this, since infinity doesn't exist, is to just pick a really high number. In this case, anything bigger than n will work. In my code, I used 1000. I added the A array on the bottom so that we can see the restrictions as we create our DP array. The first thing we look at is day 0. Rest is always possible, so we set this to 1. Since one is, this is 1, this means that we can also do a contest. However, we cannot go to the gym. Since we cannot go to the gym, this stays at infinity. Since we can do the contest, this goes down to zero. Because if we do a contest on day zero, then we have rested for a total of zero days. Let's now look at day one. Day one, we can always rest. If we rest, then we take the minimum of everything in day zero. The minimum of one, zero, and infinity is zero and we add one to it because we're resting. What this represents is that we did a contest on day zero and then we rested on day one. Since day one is three, this means we can do a contest or go to the gym. If we do a contest on day one, we could either have rested on day zero or gone to the gym on day zero. We could not have done a contest. If we had gone to the gym on day zero, that, then we would have to rest for an infinite number of days. However, if we rested on day 0, so the min of 1 and in infinity is 1. So if we rested on day 0, we only rested for a total of 1 days. If we went to the gym on day 0, 
that's the minimum of this and this, which is zero. So what this means is that we can do a contest on day zero and go to the gym on day one. And that's zero number of days that we rest for. Now on day two, if we going if we are going to rest, then we take the minimum of if we're resting on day one, contest on day one, and gym on day one. The minimum is zero, and we add one to that for a total of one. And what this represents is that on day two, or sorry, on day one, we went to the gym, and on day two we rested. And of course, if we go back from how we got this zero, what this one here represents is that on day zero we did a contest. On day one, we went to the gym, and on day two, we rested. Now let's look at if we do a contest on day two. This is the minimum of this number and this number. However, A of two is two. This means that we cannot do a contest. We can only go to the gym. So this stays at infinity. And we only update this number. That's the max of, or sorry, the minimum of this and this, which is one. This basically means it doesn't matter if you did a contest or if you rested on day one. You can also you can do a gym, go to the gym on day two, and it'll only be one day of resting. For this number here, we take the max of these three values, which is for the minimum of those three values, which is one, and we add one, that's two. This represents that we could either have rested on day two and a rest again on day three, or we could have gone to the gym on day two and then rest on day three. Now, since this number here is a zero, we do not update this and this. And our answer, which is the min of these three values, is two, because two is the minimum. These represents the two ways that we can get to our answer. One way, two comes from here. The other way, the two comes from here. So let's look at those two. If the two is coming from here, and this one comes from here, and this zero comes from here, then this represents the path of doing a contest on the first day, going to the gym on the second day, resting on the third day, and resting on the fourth day. Now this two also comes from this one, and this one comes from this one, and this one comes from this one. This represents the path of resting the first day, doing a contest on the second day, going to the gym on the third day, and resting on the last day. Let's consider the memory and runtime. For the memory, let's look at the arrays that we have. We have our DP array, and we have our A array. Both of them are O of N. There's no N by N array, which would make an N squared memory. The runtime, to fill the run main runtime is in filling the DP array. Each DP value takes O of 1 to fill, and there are O of N DP values. N times 1 is N, so the runtime is O of N. To see if this will work, we approximate this to about 100, because N is 100, and this is less than 10 to 9. So this is fast enough and will work.